and welcome back to Let's Play Breath of Fire 2. Last time, we got the flute from High Fort that will allow us to converse with the people of Tunlan. Hmm. Seems like they're not a fan of their own monarchy. Aww. Anyways, we're here in Tunlan because they have a special pillow called the Therapy Pillow that will allow us to go into a giant tree's mind and cure his amnesia. And geez, well, apparently they have a pretty high turnover rate. Got, okay, <laughs> this entire line of people just getting in my way. All right, we got through them. Uh, I've got Sten in my party still. I We do need him for the upcoming area. But after that, that's probably going to be the last time I use him for quite a while, honestly. Hey, it's a High Fort Mercenary. And L is... Allegedly under the employ of this castle as a guard, but you can invite him to stay in your town, provided that the house he would choose to occupy is still open. However, he does absolutely nothing. Huh, the queen is sick, apparently. Well, I'm sure that won't uh, pose any problem to us. Let's just uh, see if we can find a royal handler who could possibly turn over the therapy pillow to us. I brought Rand into my party because he's... Can't... Whoa! Uh, I guess that's one kind of sickness you could say the queen has. <laughs> you didn't say anything. Oh, 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 okay, I get it, I get it. Hmm. But how do we go about doing that? Proper diet and exercise? Hmm. Guy named Ged, huh? He was some sort of magical dietitian? Know anything about this Ged fellow? Well, we have to go find Ged, and I don't know if they exactly say where Ged was exiled to, but I'm guessing you're just supposed to come across the island he's on while exploring with the whale and tuck it away as a future place of importance. Luckily, I know where he is, so let's get on to him. Now, because I haven't been using Rand and Cat for a while, well, specifically Rand, he's pretty behind on his stats, but hopefully he'll catch up quickly enough, as uh, the enemies in the upcoming area will give out a pretty decent amount of experience, and I did luck into a cloak knuckle for him. Now, let's check the map so I can just remember where we need to go. Alright, we want to go to that mushroom-shaped island uh, to the northeast. And here we are! Let's just... From this angle, it kind of looks like some kind of weird, top-heavy fish. Have we seen these guys before? No, we have not. Uh, not that there's really anything special I can recall about them. Uh, since Rand is so behind, I'm just going to have him take up the rear for a while. These guys must be weak to fire. Cat did an awful lot of damage there. Still have Cat equipped with the fire staff she got from a Keller, just because that's the best weapon she has at the moment. I greatly appreciate Cat's very high agility. Ooh, those guys have a pretty good experience. Yeah, hopefully Rand will be able to catch up soon. Luckily, the way the experience curve works in this game, uh, if a character is underleveled, it doesn't take them too terribly long to catch up. Anyways, you probably saw those posts right there. That's why we need Sten for this area, as it's the only way to get up. Yes, we need you to cure the queen's fatness. Pretty girls, huh? Well, as it just so happens, I have Cat in my party. You can also use Nina for this. Hmm, magic diet, huh? Oh, is he not going to go for it? What, you don't remember? Isn't that the whole reason you're out on this random island in the middle of nowhere? That is a very creepy way of putting that. 
Yeah, I, I, I agree with Cat here. We're in a hurry, old man. Just do what we say. Okay, Cat, you're gonna kill him if you keep up with that. Oh, I mean, guess that worked. If only such a diet existed in the real world. Well, oh, that was that was simple. All right, let's go back to Tunlin. Now, I know what you're thinking. This seems a little too easy, and it does look like there's a lot more to this area than what we just saw, and you'd be correct. But, for the time being, we'd have to go back to Tunlin. This could go by a little faster if I had someone with warp in my party, but I, I really want Rand to be catching up on levels, because he is very far behind right now. It's really hard to use a balanced party in this game without somebody falling behind, just because... There's going to be situations where you need certain characters, and that kind of locks the choices on you. Pimas. These guys, not too much special about them. They're really fast, and they like to cast agility up on each other, but otherwise they're not terribly threatening enemies, and if one dies, the other might run away on you. They are one of the very few enemies that we can encounter at this point that are actually capable of outspeeding Cat. But... Just take care of them like so, and there we go. Get another decent chunk of experience. Sten gets a level that he doesn't need. Rand gets a level that he does need. And Cure 2. Very good. Yeah, if I had persisted in using Rand for a little bit, he would have gotten Cure 2 uh, earlier. Uh, and we'd have that spell, which would be helpful. But yeah, that's why uh, I don't particularly care for learning Cure 2 from Ray earlier on, because by the time Cure 2 is going to be useful to you, uh, you're already going to be getting it with your characters, and in terms of healing in the field and even in battle, for a very long time, items are just a way more cost-effective and practical way of doing it. It isn't until uh, we get the Cure 3 spell that you're really going to pay attention to healing magic. Are we already on a first-name basis, old lady? See, the way this game's translation has been working out so far, it's so hard to tell uh, what they're actually trying to say. Like, I can't tell if that was supposed to be an insult or a genuine expression of concern. Okay, I, I'm exaggerating. That one was pretty clear-cut. She was being mean to him. But still. Don't you just hate it when you're being backseat dieteered like that? I don't think that's a word at all. Backseat dieted. Wait, wait, are you saying that there are demons that are making her really fat? Oh, one of the stranger ways the monsters have gone about this. In a week, she's going to end up looking like Trout. We can't have that happen. Well, is there any way we can fix this? Alright, so looks like he's got a plan. A plan that may take us on quite the fantastic voyage, if you catch my drift. But yeah, back to the island, and uh, Maori Island is the name of that island that we found him on. Not too many of the landmasses in this game are actually named, as far as I can tell. 
Like, I called that uh, Cameo Island with Bo and Karn Giant Island, but, you know, that's just a name that I give it based on the enemies there. Maori Island it is, though. Let's go. I suppose I could have just cut to uh, getting back to the island, but it's really not that far from here, and unlike a lot of other games of the era, when you're on your water-faring vessel, so to speak, there isn't any encounters, so it's pretty easy to get to places taking the whale. More of those mushroom guys to take on. I'll fight as many of those guys as I need to, because really I need the experience, and they give out not an insubstantial amount. Is this guy doing jumping jacks or something? Well, we just got here. Ah, I called it. See, it's this thing called a letter, and it has words written on it, and those words tell you what you need to know. Pick some mushrooms, huh? Well, how will that help? Okay, so it's got like a four dots on it, arranged in sort of a triangular pattern. Alright, so basically this is the way this dungeon works. We have to get to the top of the mountain and pick the mushrooms needed, but there's going to be various kinds of mushrooms, so we have to pay attention to the one that he showed us. And unfortunately, there's a couple that actually look pretty similar, so I may screw this up, because like an idiot, I didn't look up what was the correct one before I started recording. But hey, if I pick wrong, that's what we have the magic of video editing for. And we've got a bunch of new enemies here, but I'm using a party that doesn't really have too many options to it. Suppose I can have Sten use Flame. Uh, don't have too many spare Wisdom Fruits, though. Band behind. Oh, wow. Sometimes a critically cast spell really does pull in some decent results, at least at this point in the game. Speaking of uh, using Wisdom Fruits to top off your AP, they're... Oh, another new enemy, so I can keep going. There's actually a somewhat interesting strategy with a uh, cat later on in the game, where we can find a way to boost her AP and allow her to use some of those high-level spells that she has, and then you can just restore it with uh, Wisdom Fruits after the fight, and... For a little bit of time, this will actually allow you to one-shot a lot of the encounters, because her spells are actually very, very powerful. Unfortunately, the time when you can execute that strategy is also relatively late in the game. Also, just in regards to that Ganga enemy, it's a pretty basic enemy, it's got high defense. Hits relatively hard and uh, has some breath attacks, if I recall correctly. Also, I just wanted to draw attention to this with uh, his shamanized form, and also I gave him a new dagger. Sten is actually very slightly stronger than Jeff at the moment. I'm going to keep Jeff at the front of the party, though, because in the scramble formation, uh, first and second character do and take the same amount of damage. Ooh, a new weapon for uh, Spar. That's nice. Jeff is significantly more durable than Sten, so it makes more sense to have him be in the point position so he draws more of the enemy's attacks. I think I said that they do and take the same amount of damage. I mean, they have the same multiplier applied to the damage taken and received, or given and received. Some days I just feel like... saying things that are really redundant, you know? Alright, time to put Sten to work here. There's a few treasure chests on this mountain. Some of them contain some decent stuff, but nothing has anything that I am particularly crazy about. Flame Sword, we have long since passed that by. And by long since passed that by, I mean we got a slightly better weapon from the Oparupa. Oh, hey, new enemy. Uh... Not much to say about atlases, uh, they're just another one of those enemies that can occasionally get uh, 
or will be more likely to launch critical hits. I forget, though, if they're of the variety that misses a lot, but otherwise always lands critical hits, or if uh, they just have a higher than usual critical hit ratio. Alright, Rand's already gained two levels in the span of this video. Let's see, I think his defense was like 82 and his strength, his attack was 107. <laughs> Alright, he's, yeah, he's getting up there. Wow, Jeff has a lot of experience points. He's already broke the 100,000 marker. Oof, I just uh, discovered what the Gongas can really do. They can use a spell called 8.0, which is an Earth-type spell that does 70 to 80 points of damage to your entire party. Very nasty against a character like Cad, who doesn't have much HP to work with. Ooh, a flame shield. Uh, I think I already have that on anyone who could equip it, actually. Still, it should sell for a good amount of money. Yeah, whenever you find equipment inside dungeons, if it's not something you already have, then you can... Yeah, those atlases can hit pretty hard. They just hit... One of them just hit Cat for over 100 hit points of damage. I have a feeling that those fights could go pretty nasty uh, if a bunch of them managed to land hits in a row. Uh, I thought there was a treasure chest out this way. Obviously, I uh, totally misjudged the perspective on that ledge. Like I said, though, there's not anything I'm terribly interested in grabbing while I'm going through this dungeon, so if I miss a couple chests, I'm not going to lose my mind over it. Man, though, critical hits in this game are pretty uh, cool, honestly. Like, it, it, you definitely get more of them as the game goes on, so I'm pretty sure that's dictated by your uh, luck stat. And it results in physical characters... Or I suppose I should say physically oriented characters to pop off uh, much more impressive damage figures consistently than what you'd expect their uh, stats would indicate. You know, when I was a kid and playing this game, I could never figure out what Sten's attacking animation was supposed to be. Like, for the longest time, I thought he was, like, doing karate chops or something, but I think he's supposed to be throwing knives. Uh, explain why his weapons are daggers. Alright, we made it. Okay, so now we gotta find one that looks like the one that guy showed us. And... This one down here looks close, but I don't think it's quite the same one. Hmm. Can't even get to those ones over there. Oh hey, new enemy, Venus Flies. Based on their appearance, I'm going to assume that they're sweet breath using enemies. Man, Sten would have so much more to offer to the party if he, his AP total just wasn't so horrifically low like it is. Because being able to use flame in an area like this pretty consistently would be very helpful. Honestly, if I didn't have to bring Sten here, I probably would have brought Nina, and in fact, I'm going to swap Sten out for Nina once we finish with this area, but as you saw, we do need him to get through this area. I think the one we're looking for is that one right there. If I'm wrong, well, you'll see what, what happens. Oh, sweet! If you're wrong, then he turns you away saying, well, this is the wrong mushroom, go back and get the correct one and you have to walk all the way back up the mountain to get it. Alright. Well, this was a, something of a diversion, but not a particularly difficult one. We didn't even have a boss at the top of that place. Alright, let's see what we got here. A mirror, huh? Alright, well, we'll find out what we have to do with this stuff next time. Until then, I hope you enjoyed watching, and please, have a nice day. I will see you in the next video.